Welcome to episode 3 in the Colossal Color Showdown. In this episode, we're going to carry on taking a look at the Thalo Turquoise, but we are going to have a look at the gradated wash, the salt test and the color mixing. Let's start with the gradated wash. We have the same 10 colors that we saw in the last episode. Gradated wash is a great test to see how granulating a color is as well as how well it moves through water. Now, bearing in mind that I do use an extra amount of water in creating these gradated washes than I would do in real life. So you can see the paint at its worst. So any problems the paint's gonna have, it will show up on this test. Daniel Smith, I don't know what it's about Daniel Smith, but we had the same thing with the ultramarine blue where the gradation does this weird curvy thing. Now the marine blue is doing kind of a similar thing, but not as bad as Daniel Smith. So I don't know if it's my technique, but all the other colors seems to be okay. So that's good. I would say that in terms of the smoothest gradation, Da Vinci wins out. I know Quartz is supposed to be the one with the artificial ox gold. It's supposed to rush across the water. I'm not finding that so far with the ultramarine blue and the thalo turquoise, but the Da Vinci one for both colors have just whooshed across the page. And you can almost see that speed in the colors because you get these very, very, very subtle lines going across which kind of expresses the speed at which the pigments moved. So bravo to Da Vinci for being able to create such a smooth gradated wash on a very, very economical paper with extra, extra amount of water. If I were to pick two more brands that do a great job at gradating, I would pick Holbein and Schmincke. They just create a more even gradated washes than all the rest of the colors. With the rest of the colors, the master on which is these colors at the top, where the colors are pretty concentrated with quite minimal amount of water, tend to stay up at the top. And you can really see that in the Daniel Smith and Sennelier Mission Gold and M. Graham. And then there's like a big step in how faint the next section is, whereas with the Da Vinci one, it's very, very smooth. I would say the worst culprits at this is definitely M. Graham, Daniel Smith, Sennelier, Mission Gold, and Core, surprisingly, with Windsor Newton and Lucas being no bad at it. So if you do do a lot of gradated wash, do consider Da Vinci, Holbein, or Schmincke before you consider all the other colors. Let's now look at the salt test. Just like the salt test in ultramarine, I am surprised to see the results of this test because the reactions were so varied. M. Graham, Quar, and Lucas, it basically did nothing. No reaction, particularly M. Graham and Lucas. Quar, you do see a little, little tiny bits of where the area became lighter, but these two, it's just nothing's happening. The most reactive, I would say, is the Daniel Smith one, Holbein's one, Schmincke's one, Da Vinci and Windsor & Newton. So I would consider those colors if you do like using salt in your painting. I'm just really surprised again at how varied the reaction to salt or the colors have been. And it will be very interesting to see if this will continue throughout the series. And I don't usually have a good word to say about Windsor Newton personally, but I have to say I do like the pattern that this one created. It's really, really nice. And then finally, we take a look at the color mixes. I said in the last episode that doing 12 color mixes for all the colors kind of nearly drove me mad. So with suggestions from my dear patrons, we've taken down the number of colors to four colors. We're going to be mixing each episode's color with its complementary. In this case, for Thalo Turquoise, it is a warm red. So here I'm using Permanent Red by Daniel Smith. And then we're going to mix with three primary colors. And for that, I did choose the CMY colors rather than red, yellow, and blue. And the reason for that is the Queens and the Thalos really helped me in the last episode to see how weak or strong a particular color's tinting strength was, whereas colors for red, yellow, and blue don't tend to tell me that information quite as much. 
And in terms of the highest tinting strength, I would say M. Graham wins out. It had really, really strong tinting strength. In second place, I would say it's Mission Gold. So it's really interesting that the two brands that we kind of saw as most uneven, as we saw in the main swatching, these two were kind of more uneven than say, like a Da Vinci one, there's a lot more dark patches than all the other colors. It's interesting that those two brands also happen to be the most highly tinting strengthed colors. And that kind of makes sense. It's because they have such high tinting strength and have darker patches. When we looked at Core, we said that it was really green compared to the other colors. And that really does show up in the color mixes because it's more towards the green, the complementary color needs to be a little bit of a cooler red than the permanent red. This is Thalo Turquoise being a lot more green. So let's say we're over here. It's complementary color needs to also come down. So really the complementary color to the core one should be more like a quinacridone rose rather than permanent red. And that really shows up here in the neutralization line in that this is not quite as well neutralized as these ones. There's too much red in here and not enough blue. And you can see in the three color mixes of the primaries that it's slightly different color from the rest. So with the coarse one, I would personally say that it's a very unpredictable color. It's a lot greener than certainly I expected, and it mixes differently to a color that is called Thalo Turquoise. Another surprise was the Lucas's one. I would have thought it being full of fillers and things that the colors would be really not nice, but I don't hate these colors. I think they're fine. So that's a surprise to me. I really would have thought that the colors would be more chalky and horrible. In this comparison, it's not that bad, I have to admit. I wouldn't say it's as good as the rest, but it's also not as bad as I would have thought a color with a filler would perform. So that was all the tests we did, and we compared 10 Thalo Turquoises. Which one is your favorite? I still really like the Daniel Smith one, but I do tip my hats off to Da Vinci for creating a very smooth color that is also very good at doing gradated washes. I am very impressed by Da Vinci's work. And maybe once I run out of all my <laughs> mini tubes of Thalo Turquoise by Daniel Smith that I have, I might move on to buying Da Vinci's one. The one that I was least impressed with, or won't surprise you, it is the Quartz one. It's just too green and it behaves in such an odd way. And there's don't seem to be any other quality advantage over the rest to warrant how weird this one is. It doesn't do smooth gradation, it mixes weird, and it doesn't react to salt. But because color is perceived so differently by different people, it may be that this is your perfect Thalo Turquoise and the rest are the wrong colors. If you do want to give the Thalo Turquoises a go and you want to do your own comparison, I will be doing Thalo Turquoise as next month's Patreon reward dot card. This is this month's dot card. It's all the ultramarine blues. And what I've decided to do is make dot cards for the whole series. So this month is gonna be ultramarine blue. Next month is gonna be Thalo Turquoise and so on and so forth. So for the first 10 months of 2019, you get to try out the colors I've used in this series. I hope you like that plan. I'm very excited by it. So if you do wanna try Thalo Turquoise, do sign up for my Patreon rewards, but next month and if you want to try the ultramarine blue i do still have few spaces left for the ultramarine blue so do sign up for the ultramarine blue if you're interested in that as soon as possible it'd be very interesting to know if this series is changing your mind about what brand you like the most so do let me know in the comments down below what color is your favorite before seeing this episode and what color is now your favorite if it has changed and if you do want to give any of these colors a go, then I have left links for each of this color and where you can get them in the description down below. If this video was interesting and useful to you, then please do give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't done so already. Thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you in the next video. Bye.